are all familiar with. He's made the Pro Bowl a couple times. It's former Detroit Lions safety Glover Quinn in the house. Glover, thanks so much for hopping on. How's your day been? What are you up to? Oh, man, thank you for having me. Day's been pretty good, man. Just doing a little bit around the house, a couple meetings, a couple things for uh, a couple projects that I'm working on. Um, so, yeah, overall, it's been good. Getting closer to the afternoon, time for kiddos and stuff like that. But for the most part, it's been a good day. That's awesome. So, I mean, I have to ask you, right, what have you been up to before we get into all the questions? Just what's, like, post-football life been like for you? You know what? It's been pretty cool. You know, it's been, um, you know... Just been cool just to dive into different things. Um, I was fortunate enough to play pretty good amount of time, make, you know, some good money. And so, you know, first getting into retirement, I didn't really have to jump into any one thing to continue to live my life. You know what I'm saying? So I was able to just kind of sit back, take some time, enjoy my family and, you know, see where, see where my interests and my, my things just kind of led. And so I kind of got into, you know, digital media, basically photos, videos around my kids, um, playing sports and things like that. And just kind of developed even more from that. And so I've really, you know, enjoyed the, the arts side of things, photography, um, taking different photos and doing things like that. And now I'd be, uh, do framing, like, you know, framing, started framing my pictures. Um, and it was just kind of fun. It was so relaxing. And so, so many different things. So now I do custom framing for almost whatever, anything actually. Um, so it's been kind of cool, man. It's just, it's something different. It's something fun, something that I enjoy to do. So that's what I do. Yeah, that's definitely awesome. I mean, like I'm a high school football coach in my area too. So our season wrapped up a couple of weeks ago and I can confidently say like, it's been nice having so much more time on my hands. Um, you know, just to be able to like be at home, hang around the family, obviously sleep a lot more. Cause I'm sure, you know, right. You and the season's right. here, you're seems like time flies by and you're in like meetings and games and practices and like prep week and all that, you know, pretty much like seven days out of the week but I, I think you know as we get into it right the lions have been much better in 2022 than a lot of people are going to give them credit for you look at four of their six losses and they've been by about four points right less than one possession but just what does that tell you being someone who used to play in detroit right what does that tell you about what the gm brad holmes is doing as well as the head coach Dan campbell well, I mean, they 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 are playing better. They had a lot of expectations going into the season based off of how they finished last season, and just having the second year in in, in uh, Dan Campbell's scheme, um, you know, the expectations are really high. They offense has been flying high for a lot of a lot of games, right? They finished up last season and head into this season. I think they went three or four games in a row with putting up thirty five plus points. So. They they've been doing it and it's been a collective group because they re they really haven't had one like major, major superstar. Yeah, they got some good players. Amon Rossing Brown's a really good player. DeAndre Swift is a really good player. Um, but they don't have they haven't had really any like Pro Bowl like super superstars, right? So it's been a collective group um going into this season and so the season they've 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 had some really good offensive games that came out. They started out with Philly and you know, you lose a 48, 45 game, right? I mean, you score 45 points on Philly. Um, but they had a little too much firepower for us defensively, and um, we couldn't stop them. So they got a lot of good things going. They're going in the right direction. It's just they you know, have not been able to capitalize and win a lot of these close games, a lot of these one point games. And generally that's when you need like that, that one or two superstars that can go and close a game out for you. 
You need that. And I and I know everybody's not this type of person, but speaking for Detroit, you need that Calvin Johnson that you can go to on third and six in the fourth quarter and get a key first down to ice a game, right? You need that Indomitian and Sue or that Aaron Donald or that, for lack of better words, I don't want to just toot my own horn, but you need somebody that can close a game out and make a big play for you in the fourth quarter to h- defensively to help you win those close games. Otherwise, their offense is going to make those plays in the fourth quarter and their defense is going to make those plays in the fourth quarter, which is going to put you on the losing end in a lot of those games. So you mentioned it's been a collective effort and they don't necessarily have a superstar, but if I'm analyzing this Lions team from an outside perspective. I think that there is a young superstar on the roster. He just hasn't made his season rookie debut yet. And that's wide receiver Jamison Williams from Alabama. I think he was a top 10 pick in the 2022 NFL draft. I mean, what excites you about the possibility of adding a player of Williams caliber to a core that includes, you know, some budding superstars in Amon Ross St. Brown, DeAndre Swift. I think the Lions have a really solid offensive line. And then on top of that, you know, their running game is pretty solid as well. Yeah, I mean, adding a guy like that, playmaker like that, can only really help your offense, especially if you can utilize him in the right ways. He's a very speedy receiver, played at University of Alabama. You know, very good program that he went to college in. Uh, unfortunately, he got hurt when he did, and it's caused him to miss a lot of time in going into this season. And so just me, honestly, I don't even know if the Lions should even think about even putting him out there this year. You know, this season is kind of a wash right now with the record coming off of ACL. Like, there's no point in putting him out there right now. Um, just give him this whole time and all the offseason to get strong, learn, and be ready to play. You don't want to put a rookie out there, and then you put him out there mid to the end of the season coming off ACL. I don't think that would be good. But adding him gives you a deep threat, somebody that can stretch the field for you, open things up more for Amon Ross St. Brown, open up things more for DeAndre Swift because he's a guy that they can hand the ball off to. He's a guy that can make plays for you in the pass game. So all those guys need space. And when you can clear out the defense, you create more space. You know, we saw it a lot and we're seeing it right now in in Miami. Tyreek Hill can clear out space with his speed and it just opens up more things for guys underneath. So it'll be great, you know, when he get a chance to play, um, get a chance to practice, just get back on the field. I'm sure he'll be excited just get back out to playing football and get out of the training room. Nobody likes to spend all their time in the training room, rehabbing and all those things. So I'm sure he'll be excited to get back out there and play. I just don't know if this year would be the year. I mean, yeah, Jameson's, I think once he does return, going to be exciting to watch. But how about another first round rookie on the defensive side of the ball? I mean, what have you seen from Aiden Hutchinson so far this season that makes you think, okay, the Lions have the face of their defense for the next like 10 to 15 years? Well, I mean, he's obviously made some plays. He's been, you know, I would say, I don't want to say inconsistent, but. You know, you come out one game and you don't hear his name called very much. And then you come out the next game and you hear his name called consistently throughout the entire game. Um, made a big play last week, catching an interception against Aaron Rodgers. Um, you know, we've seen him. He's probably leading rookies in sacks. He's doing some things that compare to other rookies in the league. And he's having a, a great year. Um, but when you watch them in week in and week out, you know, you he like I said, you may go the first game of the season and don't hear his name call, but then you come out the second game of the season and you got two and a half, three sacks, right? Then the third game you may not hear much. Then the fourth game you come back and you got two sacks or three. So you know you look at his numbers right now and he has put up some good numbers, but I would like to just see more consistent play far as pressure on the quarterback, even if you're not sacking the quarterback every time, you're creating that pressure to making the quarterback uncomfortable. You're forcing double teams on yourselves, which opens up things for other D linemen and linebackers that are blitzing or rushing the passer. But I will have to say overall, he's had a pretty solid year so far. He's definitely going to be the face of the Lions defense for a long time. He loves being in Detroit. He's a he's a Michigan native. So he he's happy where he's at, and I think the Lions are happy with him. 
you mentioned the Aaron Rodgers interception. And I mean, one of the guys that's been on my watch list over the last couple of weeks has been safety Kirby Joseph. He did have two interceptions in the game against the Packers this past Sunday. What does a young safety like that have to do to come? Kind of continue improving and take the next step forward because I think that when you intercept a player like Aaron Rodgers twice in one game, that's just a big shot of confidence to a young player. Well, I think the biggest thing you have to do is you got to look in the mirror and and you have to understand how did I get to this point. And I think that's what a lot of people don't really do. A lot of people, and I tell my kids this all the time: people don't get tired of winning, people get tired of losing, right? But people get tired of doing what it takes to win, right? So nobody gets tired of making plays. Nobody. Everybody loves to make plays. They get tired of doing what it takes to make those plays. So whether it's extra film study, whether it's extra drills at practice, whether it's whatever it is you are doing to put yourself in positions to make those plays, you got to continue to do that. So if you're working, 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 when you have zero interceptions, you got to work, 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 work when you got 20 interceptions if you want to continue to make those plays. And so he's been working hard. He's a playmaker. He was a playmaker in college. You know, these last few weeks, you know, when he kind of got the start or started playing more, especially after Tracy Walker went down, you know, he forced a fumble against the Dallas Cowboys on a big hit. Um, And then he came back and forced another fumble the next week against Miami with a big hit. And then you come back this week and you got two turnovers, um, a big pass breakup down the middle of the field. So that's four turnovers in four weeks. So he's definitely that guy in the secondary that 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 can make plays, that wants to make plays, that can turn the ball over by, you know, fumble, forcing fumbles, catching their interceptions, has ball skills. So he's been a definitely a bright spot for his line secondary. And he's young. He's young. So hopefully he can continue to grow on that. Don't get complacent. Don't get comfortable. Don't get in your feelings or anything about, you know, you caught two interceptions off Aaron Rodgers. Cool. Go catch two more next week. Go catch another one. Go make a play every week and continue to push yourself. That's honestly a phenomenal response. I think a lot of what you said there applies to so many young athletes. It's like you just have to consistently keep working because you will get your big break eventually, no matter what level it's at. But just keep going because something you do, you know, in week nine, well, week 10 is kind of of a reset button because every week's a new week in the NFL but you spoke about next week I mean let's get into Bears Lions just what do you think are the key themes here for both teams because it's a single win that separates both of these teams the Lions I believe are uh, two and six the Bears are three and six but they've had pretty even seasons so far and I think that the arrow for both both teams is pointing upward Yes, I do, I do think that. I think the Bears have played some decent football, you know, this year. They've lost some some bad games, I think, kind of like, um, you know, the Lions have. So you're right. There's a two kind of familiar teams, um, similar teams, and how their season has gone. Um, you know, I, I think the Lions, you know, are definitely going to have to, especially coming off the game that he had last week, you know, Justin Fields rushed for 170 something yards, right? That's been an Achilles heels for the Lions defense is 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 letting the quarterback get out the pocket and run for key first downs and and keep plays alive. And now they're gonna have a a, a huge task. Um, probably one of the biggest ones they've had all year outside of, you know, Jalen Hurst, but I don't even know if Jalen Hurst runs it as effectively as Justin Fields can run it. So it's gonna be their biggest test this year. I think they got to do a good job of containing him and just forcing him to throw it to some of his receivers, forcing him to throw it in the pocket. And then defensively, you know, we just got to continue to do what we've been doing, continue to spread the ball around, run the ball, you know, keep Jared Goff out of obvious pass situations, um, mix it up on those guys, run the ball, play action. Amon Ross St. Brown comes through and makes big plays on third downs to keep the chains moving. And they just got to play good complementary football like they played last week. Do enough offensively to score enough points and do enough defensively to keep them from scoring. And so I think I think it could be a decent game, although both teams are, are you know, at the bottom of their division. I think both teams are trending in the right direction, and this will just be another good game for them to get on track. The Lions are coming off a big win. I think Chicago is coming off two. Uh, disappointing close losses. 
I think they I think they won. I think they had a chance to win this game this past week against Miami. And I can't remember who they played the week before, but I think that game was a pretty close game as well. So it's like they're right there trying to get over that hump. And, you know, hopefully it's another week where they're still trying to get over that hump. See, one of the things that circled on my own notepad for this game is just how does a player like Amon Ross St. Brown perform against a bear secondary that's got, you know, Kyler Gordon as well as Jaquan Brisker. But, you know, I have to ask you from a safety's perspective, right? What are you doing like throughout the week outside of watching film and scouting the other team to slow down a guy like Amon Ross St. Brown? Well, as a safety, that's really all you can do is watch the film. Um, that's really all you can do because, you know, depending on your scheme and how you guys are doing things, you, you're not really matched up on him as much because you're a safety. He's a corner. I mean, he, he's going to have a corner on him. So you want to watch film so you can kind of see what, what they're doing, how they're using him, how they're trying to use him, when do they go to him, what are his favorite routes, what do he run all the time, like, a lot of different things that you can pick up on just from watching the film and paying close attention to it. So as a safety, that's really what I'm doing, understanding what type of routes he run when he's in a slot, what type of routes do he run when he's outside, what like when he runs, when he goes in motion, what are the typical types of routes that he do from different alignments, different, you know, in any and everything to give myself a clue. Okay, every time he lines up in the slot to the left, they like to do this and this and that. So now I've narrowed down their playbook to three or four plays. And then at the snap of the ball, I should be able to narrow it down to one or two plays. And so that's kind of the the point that you want to get to as a football player, especially as a safety win. Like I said, you're not directly lined up on those wide receivers, but you need to know where they are and what they like to do with those guys when they're in a certain position. So have you had a chance to watch Bear Safety Jaquan Brisker at all this season or even going back to his college days? Because I think the label a lot of people have for him is budding superstar. Well, no, I actually haven't had a chance to watch him. I do know the defensive coordinator, uh, Alan Williams, uh, who you guys defense coordinators. He was my safeties coach for four years when I was in Detroit. So I know him very well. I know what he preaches. I know what he stands for. I know the type of guys that um, that he's looking for. And if he's a rookie and Coach Allen Williams had anything to do with him as a draft pick, he probably plays a little bit like me. <laughs> but um, I haven't had a chance to watch him personally. All right, you'll get your first uh, taste this week, right, when Bears are playing the Lions. And I'm sure, you know, you'll look at Jaquan and be like, okay, that was definitely something I used to do. But, you know, as the Lions, for the Lions defense, right, what do you do? What do they have to do to kind of stop this one-two running back punch of Montgomery as well as Khalil Herbert, which is obviously leading the NFL in rushing? I mean, that's going to be a tough, tough task, you know, because when you have to when you have to commit a lot of games, to the, a lot of guys to the run game, that opens up things in the past. Unfortunately for the Lions, I don't know how much Chicago wants to throw the ball. I mean, Justin Fields had more rushing yards than he had passing yards last game. Um, so you got a double, double headed, you know, running attack with the running backs and then you add Justin Fields into it. I don't know if that plays well, you know, for. Chicago because the Lions, I think, will definitely go in to try to stop the run. They're going to do everything they can to hopefully try to keep Justin Fields in the pocket, hand the ball off to those running backs, and they're going to try to stop them and force Justin Fields to throw the ball inside the pocket. So that's a huge task for the Detroit Lions. That's a huge task. You know, like I said, they've struggled all year with quarterbacks getting out the pocket, quarterbacks keeping plays alive. So that's going to be a big issue this week as well. You know, we got to see how Kirby Joseph comes out of the concussion protocol. He may not even be there this week. So there's a lot of different things that that that's up in the air for the Detroit Lions. But I think one of the biggest things they're going to have to do, and it's going to involve everybody going to get their safeties involved to stop their run game. They're going to put the pressure on the corners to be able to hold up and force 
um, Justin Fields to throw the ball, and we got to do a good enough job to to force him to throw it by stopping the run. Yeah, I see. I find it to be so interesting, right? Because it doesn't seem like we've seen these quarterbacks like Lamar Jackson or Josh Allen, you know, how to game plan and kind of go against a quarterback who's so dangerous with his legs. And I'm a firm believer that I don't think all defensive coordinators and even head coaches have found like a surefire your solutions and or a Josh Allen once they do get out of the pocket because it's almost kind of like a pick your poison type thing but you know the Bears don't necessarily have an elite front seven by any means their best player is Justin Jones who's on a kind of a bargain deal you know you have some solid pieces there like a Travis Gibson but when you don't have a front seven in front of you right that's playing at a high level. What do you think that's going to do for the Lions offense in this game? Because I think this is a game where if you look at the state of the Bears defense, the Lions can certainly take a massive step forward. Yeah, I mean, the Lions, you know, they definitely have guys on offense that can play. And, you know, every extra week, those the, they get healthier, right? Amon Ross and Brown gets healthier. DeAndre Swift gets healthier. Um, you get closer to getting some of these other guys back. Um so if, if if the Chicago defense is, is struggling, the Lions offense would definitely make them pay for it. They're gonna they're gonna play hard. They're gonna run the ball. They're gonna hand it off to Jamal Williams. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna mix the ball around. They're gonna spread the ball around to a bunch of different guys, and you know, try to get things going. Try to make something happen. So, like I said, I know you guys are the coordinator. I know some of the things that he's preaching just because I know him personally. And I know he is probably going to want his guys to show well against Detroit. So he'll have those guys ready to play. The Lions just have to do their job to stick to the game plan, stick to what they know will work with what they like to do. Run the ball, run play action. Do not put too much pressure on Jared Goff to sit back there and throw the ball 68 times like Patrick Mahomes did, or throw it 40 sometimes, like Tom Brady. Like, we don't need to do that. You know, we need to be still in our 24 to 29 passes because that means we're running the ball, controlling the clock. So I think that's one of the things Lions going to have to do. Um, but if they need to spread the game open, I think they have some guys, especially, like I said, with Amon getting healthier, Swift getting healthier, uh, Josh Reynolds, all those guys should be able to make some plays on the Chicago defense. You mentioned Allen Williams a couple times. I have to ask you, right, for you as because you mentioned he was like your safety coach, right? But just what impact has had did Allen have on you throughout your career and your time in Detroit? Because I think it's very clear. Like when I listen to Allen speak, right. In the media sessions, I mean, I get the vibe that he's like a very positive, upbeat coach, as well as just a very positive, upbeat person. And that, you know, he brings that positive attitude and energy to team meetings every single day, to positional meetings. But the reality is that his whole thing is it's like, hey, you know, we're all in this together and I'm going to make you better. Yeah, I mean, Coach Allen was, you know, he was. I would say probably one of the best coaches that I had um, and it's def the best at that time because the thing that Coach Allen did for me was I think he understood the player-coach relationship in the NFL because a lot of times I think coaches in the NFL don't look at it as player coach they look at it as coach kid and at coach allen was player coach but we were all men so for him to come in and the relationship that we built organically we didn't do anything to i didn't do anything to try to brown nose or make him like me as a new coach or anything like that i was myself he was himself and we just built a, a strong relationship where we were able to talk to each other he listened to some ideas that I had far as things to do on the field. I listened to him and trusted him as the coach. 
Um, we built a lot of trust in the practice field, in the meeting rooms, and then going out and being able to do some of those things in the game as well. We built a lot of trust. He knew that whatever the game plan was or whatever, I was going to try to get it done. And even when I did make a mistake, he would just want to know what was I thinking? Because he knew for the most part, if I didn't do something, it was a reason why I didn't do it because I didn't make a lot of mental mistakes. So we just built a great relationship. So for me to have somebody that I can talk to, talk about my ideals, somebody that trusted me on the field, somebody that wanted me and believed in me to be out there and make the plays, that was what I needed. That's what I wanted. And that's what he gave. And, you know, that was a, one of the reasons why we had a lot, a lot, a lot of great results um, during our time there. So I'm definitely appreciative to, to A-Dub. Um, glad he got the, the coordinated job. Um, hate that it was in Chicago, but definitely glad that he got the coordinated job. And um, I wish him well, you know. I wish him well. I know he'll have his guys ready to go, and they'll be excited and ready to play for him because they know where he came from. Um, so I expect them to play with a little more energy defensively. Um, but still hope the Lions come away with the dub. All right, so I have to ask you this, right? Because you're one of the few people out there who can kind of take us inside what these NFC North rivalry games are all about. But just... You know, what's it like playing in a lot of these rivalry games? Because you have, I think, in the NFC North, right? You got the Vikings, who, again, are like 60-something years old. But then you've got the Bears, Packers, and Lions, who have been around for like 90 to 100 years at this point. You know, I mean, it's really a, the, the rivalries. The, I mean, the games are going to be solid just because. But they are better when the teams are good, right? That's why we're looking at the AFC East right now. And those rivalries, those games become better because all those teams are playing well, right? So the the the, the North has always been called the black and blue division. Those guys that play tough, they play physical. That's just how it's going to be. Chicago has always been that way. Um, so when Chicago and Detroit gets together, it's going to be another tough physical game. And we know the Lions are going to play hard. They're going to play with some grit. They're going to play with some attitude. And I'm sure the Bears are going to be the same exact way, right? They have that personality that's just something that's in the, about the organization. And you guys are going to be that way. So um, the division games are always tough, man. Anytime you play a division game, those are people that you play twice a year. So the scouting on those guys, the just the the familiarity with those guys are always very, 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 very high in 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 these division games. That's why you see division games can go either way because it's just a division game and that's how they are. So I expect it to be a physical game. What are you playing at? In Detroit or Chicago? It's in Chicago, and I know the it's Bears Chicago. are gonna be in Detroit in like January. So if it's in Chicago, it's early November, so it's probably not super cold out there right now. Probably a little cool, a little brisk air. So it should be a great football weather for those guys, and it should be a fun day. I used to love playing in Chicago, although the field was not very great. But it was historic, and I love history, and I love the the historicalness of the Chicago Bears organization. So I had a pleasure playing there and playing against you guys. So I look forward to be a good game on Sunday. I know I'll be there, so it's definitely going to be exciting. Before we get out of here, though, where can people kind of follow you on social media and, you know, keep up with all the work that you're doing? Um, So you can follow me. I'm on Twitter at Glover Quinn Jr. And I'm on Instagram at Glover Quinn. And on my Instagram, if you go to my profile, there's a bunch of different pages um, because I truly believe that Instagram is a promotional platform. That's what I believe it is. So I believe that anything and everything that you're doing should have its own page if that's strictly what you're doing. So I have my personal page where I post a lot of my football content, all my podcast stuff, things that involves my football life, which a lot of my fans are football fans, right? That's, that's how a lot of people know me. So I have that page and then I have a photo page where if you're into photography or you're into interested in some of the pictures that I take and my journey in photography, you can follow that page. I have a framing page for pictures that I frame and just different things and ideas that I do from that standpoint. I have 
a product page where I take pictures of shoes and just just different things that I do that I try to market or just put out there as a certain way that if you're interested in that alone, then just follow that. You don't have to follow my personal page. You might not want to hear me talk about football all day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You might be interested in taking a photo or something. So that's where you can find me at, man. That's kind of what I do. I just enjoy myself. I enjoy my time and I just like to, you know, have fun. Absolutely. I know I shot you a follow on Twitter this morning, but thanks again for hopping on. Looking forward to a good game on Sunday. And yeah, you're welcome on here at uh, any time. So thanks again. We'll see you later. All right, man. Appreciate you.